Uh, I think I've been to the murders of it, at least eight kids that I can think of uh, off the top of my head. And those are some of the hardest ones. Patience is gone. You can't eat, you can't sleep. Every part of your life is disrupted. It was tough. They reminded me of uh, my friend's kids. And I couldn't get the screams out of my head for months. Our bad day and the average bad day are two different things. Our bad day usually involves something horrendous, carnage, and usually there's a lot of blood and death. I got a call for a, a VSA infant, and the child was one and a half, two years old. And uh, the, the circumstances were, it was odd when we got there, and there's a, a little girl lying on the ground, and her mom's bawling and freaking out on the phone doing CPR, and the kid was blue. And the dad standing like, oh, I don't know what's happening, it's over there. I remember I was driving home from shift and I got a call from the platoon chief from the other shift saying, oh yeah, by the way, that the dad snapped her neck and murdered her, you need to write a witness statement. After two weeks of uh, smelling rotting corpses in the Philippines after Hurricane Holanda, we were on a road going to deliver an inflatable hospital up to the uh, different region. And as we're driving down the road, a dog came out of the woods with a small child's arm in its mouth that it had found off of a corpse that's been there for a month. And that was its food. We got on scene and uh, it turned out this kid had been cross-checked headfirst into the boards, had been unconscious. And uh, we get there and he'd been removed from the ice. When I'm talking to this kid, I'm kneeling beside him, looking in his face. He tells me he could feel everything. Till they moved him. <laughs> Sorry, I've seen that kid's face. <laughs> Just about every facet of everyday life changes. And then the biggest thing to me is the loss of innocence. You realize that these things happen in the world and they're happening all around you all of the time. I felt like I was really armed to fight fires, to go to medicals, to do all these things, but they didn't arm me with something that I didn't realize was gonna affect me so much, was, was dealing with the, the human nature of the calls in your own emotions and how to react to these things. Us, police, EMS, we try and be the tough guys and uh, tough people. And we are affected by this. It does have a cumulative effect and, and it's not just one call. It's one call piled on the next call, piled on the next call. And it's like a house of cards and you try and put that last card on the top and everything comes down. You're going to experience things that you would wish and hope that you never experienced. You're gonna see things that you can't reverse, that are going to be ingrained on who you are. Lost myself into keeping busy, became a very much of a workaholic. Um, spent all my time just being busy so I wouldn't have to think about things. I had a lot of guys that I worked with who been through similar things and, and we just we used to get drunk all the time. You just hung out with people who were equally as damaged as you so you felt normal. And there was some comfort in that. So there was the black humor around the fire hall. Um, people would joke about things and that happens to this day. I learned really quickly though to just kind of shut it all out and shut off your emotional uh, response to anything and that transferred into my personal life. I didn't want to be anywhere near anybody. Um, just uh, even my own family, I just kind of pulled back a lot. If I know that there were times that I have come home from events that my children knew I was coming home from, that they, they stayed at a distance from me because they, 
they didn't know either what to say, what to do, or if I was going to uh, uh, snap, so to speak, and not be myself. It's stuff that we take for granted day in, day out, that you see over the course of your career and what you do, that it's taken away from other people. And what you realize is you're responding to the worst event of their lives but you're responding after the incident already took place and there's nothing you could have done by the time you've reacted and been called to this call to change the outcome. You can just do the best that you can do um, while you're there. I know I've talked to people and said, listen, like I, I went to this counselor and it changed my life and I wish I went to her the first day I had a bad call and I, my life wouldn't have been as painful as it had to have been. We're a team. Everything we do, when we go out that door, we do as a team. There's no one individual that uh, can do this job, any part of it, on their own. We do this together, and we need to hold on to that when we come back to the hall. You need to find that network of people that you can count on, that you can trust, that uh, will, will be there for you no matter what. and. Those are the people that you keep closest to you throughout your career and throughout your life. I didn't really know what to expect of the fire service other than it was service-based. I mean, I know that um, through military movies that there were such things as shell shock and that sort of thing, which now they're calling PTSD. There are experiences that stick with you and I guess affect you. Um, sometimes long after those calls have happened. Post-traumatic stress disorder is an anxiety disorder that usually develops after an individual has experienced a traumatic event. One of the major problems is that when people are involved in critical incidents, it may be their job to be dealing all the time with critical events, traumatic events that to other people would seem completely overwhelming. They are expected to deal with every day. And because that's part of their job description, it's very difficult for people to say, I think I've had enough. I have reached my limit. It's not just the firefighting division that deals with these stressors, uh, that our communications division as well, um, as they're the, the initial call takers, and a lot of times they're on the phone with the victims, they're hearing things, and they don't have the ability to uh, visualize or to have a conclusion uh, that we are allowed to witness. There are also some stressors in fire prevention that they have to deal with, as can be in training, if there's ever accidents on the training ground. So it's important that we uh, remember it's not just the firefighting division, but all of our divisions uh, can experience these uh, types of incidents and that there is support for all of them out there. They're not sleeping at night. Um, they're not uh, getting good rest. Uh, they're becoming agitated, uh, jumpy. Um, sometimes they become angry, uh, irritable, as anyone would be uh, when they haven't had good sleep. They may also lose their appetite uh, or eat too much. People sometimes uh, try to medicate themselves with um, alcohol or drugs. Some people will overeat. Some people will overwork. Uh, they may notice a deterioration in their relationships and they may also notice a deterioration in their ability to focus, um, function at, at their job, even if they've been working at the same job for years. Unfortunately, a lot of guys self-medicated with booze. Um, that was what was available. It was sort of uh, socially acceptable or whatever, you know. Um, so if you had a bad call over the course of your shift, a lot of times guys would go for drinks afterwards and you knew they were drinking more than they normally would or acting inappropriately. Just it was. Uh, now I would recognize it as a stress reaction to the call they'd been on. I had no patience whatsoever and I could fly off the handle at my kids or my wife over the, the simplest, silliest uh, instances, but they didn't understand. Uh, sleeping patterns completely disrupted where I've not been able to sleep because I can't turn my, my brain off when I put my head on the pillow. It's a lot of dark moments, um, a lot of Lost sleep, some nightmares, um, a lot of thinking, um, like I say, and, and some drinking and, you know, curtness, uh, you lose your temper faster and you don't know why. Well, it's probably because you're stressed because of the situation that you were involved in. 
but you just didn't have a, an outlet to, uh, or, or the knowledge to know how to uh, fix yourself. You're not alone because there's so many people that are going through the same sort of issues that, that I did and it all depends whether or not you want to seek help or not. And I'm saying why not because it's there. So the resources available for our members um, if they are in distress um, is our team which we have uh, roughly 20 people on our team. Um, it's a critical incident stress management team and it's peer driven uh, by ourselves and we have four members on each squad. Um, so there's four squads as well. We have some members in the communications division as well as the training division and fire prevention. We have our CIS team now, which is very much helpful. The debriefings after work, always, you know, you're always open up to ask questions, talk to somebody. Um, we are family at work. You talk to that person that's been on there, your big brother. Hey, we've all seen it, we've all done it. We just don't know how to, it affects, what doesn't, what affects me doesn't affect you. What affects you might not affect me at all. Each person has their own little quirk and what will uh, set them off and what will cause them to have some bad times. And so some of those things um, shared with another person who knows exactly how it is in that kind of context makes a great deal of difference. It also makes it possible to then approach someone who's outside, who can be a, a counselor, who maybe is a, a social worker, a psychologist, someone who's outside, who specifically helps people uh, debrief from these traumatic events to help you. I deal with them differently now by opening up the dialogue and I think the stigma of, of talking about anything other than being happy uh, on the job and you know it was a good burn, a crazy call and actually you know opening up about it those walls are slowly breaking down and like our peer counseling that alone is uh, is huge and, and offloading the stuff and so you don't have to carry it and I've, I mean I've gone for counseling before uh, just recently in the last couple of years um, and that was kind of when I started to address all the stuff I've been carrying for a decade. Another important facet that I find is support at home. You, we try and make sure that somebody has a spouse or um, a sibling or a good friend that is there that has that ability to provide them support for when we are off duty. I think there's a, a whole support mechanism that you're leaving out of the picture if you eliminate your family from it. That whole don't mention it at home I don't think is a good idea. I believe talking to your spouse is, is as important as talking to somebody from who you work with. Um, again, they're the ones who live with you every day. They're the ones who are going to see the change in your behavior. They're the ones who have to deal with the change in your behavior. Uh, it, talking to them will give them an understanding, maybe, as to what, what's bothering you. They're going to be your biggest supporter. I've seen a lot, done a lot, and uh, you, everybody will during their career. And uh, like I say, it's... Now that we have uh, uh, avenues to uh, help us get over some bad situations, you know, it's just like any tool that we use on the fire truck, you know, it's just another tool to help you get through uh, and, and heal yourself and uh, take advantage. So if members are experiencing distress, whether on duty or off duty, uh, they can get a hold of us as a team. Um, we do have our uh, numbers available on the intranet. So each squad has its certain representatives from our team. They can look up their numbers on the intranet, so it's just available to our membership. If they're off duty and at home, um, there is my number and email that's always available, and I can then uh, pass it on to another member on, that is on their squad if they need to deal with them directly, or I can forward them the information from Chappelle, our current EAP, uh, if they do have to take that route. Most of the time we're just doing diffusings, which is peer support. When we do go to that next stage, which is the briefings, um, or if it's a crisis one-on-one, -on -one, then we bring in our mental health professionals. They're trauma counseled, uh, trauma counselors, and they're trained in that field.
So that is their specialty and uh, it does help break the stigma when we do have known faces in the halls um, for our membership. There's this fear of being different than the rest of the people or seeming less tough, but the two toughest firefighters I've ever met were two captains I worked with and one I had for five years. The other one I you know, worked with for eight years on and off. It was a good friend of mine and they both killed themselves and they were the toughest guys I've ever met. So, you know, uh, there's something to be said to be able to open up and let it go when you need to. I think anybody around here now is going to reach back and try and help as much as they can. Uh, don't, ta don't bottle it up and take it home. Nothing good's going to come out of that. I think oh, opening up about this, dealing with it, um, yeah, just talking about it can relieve a lot of the stress that goes along with any of these issues. Don't be afraid to admit that you need help because people around you that are close to you, they see it and all it takes is for you to be honest with yourself and accept the fact that you're only human too. The fire service really is that family that we all talk about and there are people who, um, who, who really care and who really want to see you succeed and um, I think the, it's important to know that they're there but it's also important to feel comfortable to uh, reach out and let them know when you need a bit of direction or um, a bit of advice because um, they won't know unless you tell them. <laughs>